Steve Jobs said that a lot of times people don't know what they want until you show it to them. And that's the beauty of mastering your data. On one hand, it gives you the insight needed to predict what consumers of your products and services might want, what they themselves might not have thought they needed. And on the other, it allows you to present more information to your audience. And as they become more informed, they become more aware and more likely to buy. And data and consumerism go hand in hand. And that's why when you think about any data project, you must first consider what is the value to your consumer? How will it help improve their lives? My name is Michael Lonnan, and I'm the Amir Marketing Manager of Steve Systems. And for this session, Steve Systems Director of Industry Strategy, Darren Cooper, and Rebecca Chamberlain, Product Manager for Marks and Spencer, join me as we discuss the human side of data and of data projects. But first, what sort of data are we talking about? What type of information is it that consumers attach themselves to? And what makes it important to them? I think when, when consumers uh, make a decision or even businesses make a decision, there are many different things that they need in terms of information to go and push them over the line. I think any decision making process is based on a number of kind of factual elements, but also it's quite an emotive process as well. So I think you have a, a mixture of, of different types of information that are related to things that describe the, 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 the business relationship that you're going to end up with. But also there are some emotive reasons as well, especially from a consumer perspective. These are reasons that are less obvious or not exactly communicated to the person who's selling the products and services. But this information is, is very key to a sales process or a service process itself. Emotion. I love that. I love the, the, the emotion behind it. it. It takes us away from this kind of corporate idea of data. And Rebecca, I mean, what would you say? What, what are people, what are consumers looking for in terms of information? Um, I mean, you're, you're at the heart of it. So what do you think they're looking for? Well, obviously, for a retailer, we, we want to provide the information to help a consumer make an informed decision that they want to purchase the product. But I guess what you're talking about is perhaps making that information uh, meaningful to them. Mm. Uh, I mean, obviously, there, there's some information we have to provide that means it just means being compliant to regulations. You know, for example, for children's nightwear, we have to provide a safety warning because that we're expected to do that. But the consumer, that's almost just like furniture to them because they probably don't really think about is it is it do I have to keep it away from fire? But we do have to provide that. What they're more interested in is what fabric is it made of and uh, what size is it and will you know will it fit my child? Do I like it? Um, so it's getting the balance but it's providing them data that helps them make an informed purchase do you think the more information a consumer gets the more likely it is they're going to make that purchase um well <laughs> i'm sure we could get information overload if we tried to put too much information so it has to be uh the pertinent points that help make uh, make the decision and also i guess uh, that can make your product have its unique selling point you know the thing that makes it were a, a point of interest for the customer to want to purchase it as opposed to anybody else's um and i mean i think at, at these days um you know there are various things that we may want to consider like the sustainability element of the mm. product uh, yeah. because that's something that we know uh, it's quite important to customers, um, but equally, we need to be able to tell them about that in a way that makes sense to a customer. Um, so certainly with, you know, data, obviously data is a huge, um, there's a, we, you know, we, people talk about the data late, there's huge amounts of information available and businesses can use it themselves to do analysis, make decisions, but that sometimes the way the data is structured for a business may not be what a customer wants to read. So you know, knowing a product's made out of Icovero may not mean anything to a customer, yeah. but but we can, if we can tell them that that actually means it's a su sustainably su sourced viscose and how it's made, then we're going to tell them something that means more to them to help them make that decision. Yeah, I completely agree. I think, yeah, you, it's, it, the more information, but it's the type of information as well, as much as anything. I mean, Darren, what, what would you say is... is... <laughs> I agree. I mean, there's a there's a deluge of information you could potentially fire at a consumer to go and help them. I think one of the challenges that we have now is because there is so much information. It's 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 what information we go and communicate, and when and where we communicate it, which are also important points to consider as well. Where we have this um, 
understanding or, or, or deciding what type of process that the customer is going through from a customer journey perspective. Um, just providing a fixed amount of information is no longer um, is, is no longer tenable. You need to almost anticipate what the requirements of the customer are going to be for many types of companies, and, and place that the right information in the right form at the in the right channel at the right time. So. Um, the customer journey is becoming perhaps a little bit more complex for many organizations because they have to manage this this type of capability. In, in terms of managing that information, then, I, I guess um, you've got to revolve as a business. You know, you, you have your way of, of collating and managing and, and providing information. But as things change, as you say, as, as we're talking more about ethics and people wanting more information about, you know, where did my product come from? What sustainable sources resources were used as part of it? Rebecca, what would you say? How would you advise somebody? I mean, what sort of information would you show and how would you show it? Well, as as mentioned, it's got to be shown in a way that is meaningful to the customer. So, um, I mean, for us, because obviously we use um, the Stebro system step tool, we've got the ability to take information from our core systems and then apply transformations to then get it into a presentable format. So we can take the data that we might have recorded about sustainability and we can apply a logic that says, whenever I get that value, turn it into a sentence. So we can present a sentence to the customer that they can read and understand. And that, that is the key thing. It's about thinking about that end user um, so that we can present the data in a way that makes sense to them. Yeah. There's a human element to understanding what information to show to a consumer. I mean, Darren, when it comes to when we're talking about AI and, uh, you know, and, and those sorts of the machine learning, how might you apply kind of that technology, those advancements to something that's quite to decisions about what information, which is a pretty human thing to think about, how, how might you apply those things? Many businesses right now are looking at obviously how they can go and scale and how they can get economy of scale using technologies such as AI and automating things. Some of the, some of the obvious places that this is happening are in uh, customer services desks. I think we've all had the experience of having some sort of bot in front of us at, at one point of time oh, yeah. trying to go and help uh, help us make a decision or answer answer one of our questions. Um, so. AI is 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 an important part of the providing the ability to go and uh, provide these services at scale, but also it's extremely important that AI moves on from not just understanding who a customer is or or making a supposition about what they might want. Uh, AI has to be um, taught well enough to go and be non-biased in what it what it does, and you have to prove that that capability for non-bias. In fact, there are regulatory requirements to go and do that now. Um, so, so AI is a very useful tool uh, to go and help consumers make decisions, um, but, but with the uh, with the um, we, we really have to underline the fact that it really does need to go and learn with some really good data uh, in order to bring out non-biased decisions. So that's something that's uh, that's developing right now. So I was going to ask you then, Darren, are you, are you saying that where you put an AI tool in? You can't just put it in and leave it. You've got to keep going back because as you collect more and more data, presumably you can adjust the way it responds. Yeah, absolutely. And and these these AI tools, they need to be uh, accountable. Uh, AI solutions uh, that use uh, especially consumer or personal data uh, by laws. For example, in the US, there's something called the Algorithmic Accountability Act, and I won't go into the details of that. It's a bit of a mouthful, but there are there are regulations in different countries that essentially say um, AI has has to be governed. You can't just go and use AI to go and take decisions that are automated with customer information um, just like that. You have to provide a level of accountability, and that's done through a governance process. Um, and uh, it, it's also what we call ex explainable AI or XAI, as the jargon says. And essentially what that says is you have to go and um, show how the AI tooling arrived at a certain decision when it's using, for example, personal data and uh, to, to demonstrate that there's no particular bias in that decision-making process. So as we're making 
as we're working on gathering more information from consumers that help you know these systems to go and help the consumer make decisions uh, the ai tooling itself has to go and um, and be auditable in, uh, in 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 these governance type of processes and these XAI processes. Now, for anybody who is um, trying to develop a business case uh, for data management, I I would I we always talk about in the systems. We talk about thinking business first. So think about the business value as opposed to thinking about what it is as a technical solution. The thing that you're proposing. I would again go one further and say, well, I actually think about it from the consumer's perspective. Where's the value to them? If you can define um, the value of the, the, the project that you're trying to put together as a business case, and you can think of it from the consumer's perspective, you've got a better chance of understanding the flow and the reasoning behind the why of the data project. Now, Rebecca, if there was if there was a piece of advice you would give to somebody who was defining um, a, a data project, um, what, what might it be in, in regards to considering the consumer at the heart of it? Well, I guess what you're talking about is when you're trying to um, provide the justification for why perhaps you need a new master data system, you're trying to bring a human face to what does mastering your data mean? And, you know, one of the key things is getting consistent data. So from a consumer point of view, that means wherever wherever I look, I'm me as a consumer or any or any consumer yeah. will get consistent information. It won't be a case of if if I look uh, on the right hand side, I'll be told one out of thing, and on the left hand side, I'll be told another. That I will get a consistent message. Um, be that to a consumer on a website or somebody working in a business who's picking up information. That's one of the key. Uh, more human facing elements of why we would have why we want to have master data yeah and what do you, you think agree, da yeah, i was going to say darren do you agree with that sentiment <laughs> yeah. yes most definitely i think that's very much part of uh, a company's brand isn't it as well to to provide this uh, consistency of information and transparency that, that goes with that i think i think it's very much a brand issue today uh, I, I think you know leading into more customer data type topics, explaining how you're going to use that data is also part of the, the brand. If, if, if you explain how you're using the data or how the data benefits you as part of the, uh, the, the customer journey, uh, I think that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a win for the customer as well as for the business. Where do you see data, data management, um, the kind of consumer fit within all this? Where do you see it in five or, or 10 years time? Uh, I think if we're taking the theme of making data human, it's got to be when we're specifically talking about data, um, the people internalize uh, over and above what the product is and its price. Uh, it's things about um, uh, their preferences and their beliefs and their understandings and, and their adherence to brands and all that type of information. And this information is very much, it, it can be very personal and it can be very individual. And, and this is the goal really for companies to go and get this type of information, understanding um, not what somebody wants, but why they want it. So moving mm. from the what to the why yeah. um, is, is I think a goal for many organizations. And the difficulty becomes when you do that um, and you're implementing uh, new business processes to support the customer journey through AI, for example, your AI must now actually learn not how to react to particular wants, but actually to react to whys as well. Uh, and this provides a number of data challenges as well. So getting your foundational data right is extremely important uh, to go and support this uh, this future in data data management. What sort of information will be will will you need to serve up to consumers as part of product purchases? Is there going to be any changes? Are there different things we're going to be looking at? Do you think? I think um, customers will still expect to know the same sort of things to make their purchases. However, um, I think what the the big goal for companies and the word you we all keep hearing is personalization. Mm. So. It's go, you know, every business is talking about personalization. So we'll still be needing to use the data, but it's uh, which customers see the data and when. So that's going, you know, I expect 
um, that in five or ten years time, you know, Darren's talked about the why, but it will be driving what's presented to customers in different circumstances so that, you know, that they can feel that what's being presented to them is is in response to what they need at that time so that it each customer feels like it they're seeing what what make, makes sense to them and that's definitely the aim of, of most businesses at the moment do you see a, a change in the way information is presented when you look simply at the packaging is is years ago there was kind of the size and weight and that were those were the kind of the prominent pieces of information on packaging but but going forward is, is that changing is that moving into different types of information be more prominent than other types of information how does uh, how does that sort of humor or emotive um, in, inspired data how does that affect packaging Um, I think that there is a move towards um, providing more information about where the products come from. Um, you know, if it's made of a particular fabric, where the fabric was sourced, uh, just to address that customer concern about I'm buying the end product, but what what was its journey to get here? So, yeah, I think that that we are seeing more of that and that we probably will continue to do so because of people's concerns about you know, knowing uh, whether things are being generated without harm to any other parts of the world. Which is a great point to conclude our talk. Now, from a consumer's perspective, we increasingly want to know more detail about the products we buy and the services we use. We want to know where ingredients and materials come from and whether they were sustainably and ethically sourced. The objective of this talk was to highlight that data isn't necessarily about data or IT, and the focus isn't on increasing revenue directly. It's about the consumers of your products and services. You capture, manage and govern data to increase customer value, to improve their lives. And so in doing, the profit line of your business will increase as a result. Now, for more information about Steva Systems, our products and our services, please visit the Steva Systems booth and I'll be there ready to have a chat with you. But for now, thank you for listening. Enjoy the rest of the show.